typical model takes two to four hours to paint, and that scales up dramatically with size. A model this big should take weeks. So I'm gonna do it in 24 hours. But you don't keep Warhammer behind the couch? I've done this once before. In fact, my previous attempt is actually holding up my timer and I'm excited to give it a second try because I feel like I can do much better now. Ah, it's still got that new plastic smell. These knights are a dramatic amount of parts. Most kits are two to three small sprues and I am not a fast Warhammer builder. But that's the great thing about a 24 hour challenge. At the very beginning, it feels like an infinite amount of time. I'm all capped up, I am well rested and I feel unstoppable. Games Workshop kits are pretty hit and miss when it comes to ease of assembly, but this kit is really good. No mold lines to speak of, the only tricky thing is making the seams disappear with the sanding twig. And for speed, super glue is going to be the thing that holds this night together. That's the sound my dog makes when I trim his nails. And that is part of one leg, and that only took 20 minutes. That's fine, that's fine. That means that this pupper will probably be built in three hours? This kit is the Knight Serastus Lancer, one of my all time favorite knights, and in my opinion, miles ahead of the Dominus class knights. I have strong opinions on the Dominus class knights, like the Castellan and Valiant. They look like kit bashes of regular knights. They just get way more guns without having any redesign that emphasizes their role. With many more larger weapons, I would expect larger and more stable legs. Extra heavy armor as they're slower and have to tank more hits, and if it's really never meant to be equipped with melee weapons, then I would think the arms would be redesigned to better supply larger weapons. Basically, this describes the forge role to cast this knight Profirion. So when Games Workshop decided that they needed a dedicated melee knight, instead of just slapping a spear on a normal knight, they actually tried. Longer legs means it can be much faster, longer arms mean it can reach out further and keep its body out of danger, and speaking of that body, its body is much smaller and lighter to help it react faster. It actually looks like a knight designed for its purpose. Why I'm excited about this kit is... You all know Sean. Sean is my 40k nemesis. He beats me every single weekend with his Oops All Tanks Imperial Guard list. This little sucker will kill just about any tank in the game in about one punch. Less than two hours into the build and I've already got this guy about halfway done. Now that I know how long this guy is gonna take to build, about, I think I have more than enough time for a little bit of custom extra armor. I'm taking over Nick's desk because I need room to make a mess. I did this once before on the previous night and it went, it went okay. I would love to try again with some UV cure resin. That might've worked a little bit better and faster than the green stuff. I would like to try again with UV cure resin and I still have all those old molds. I got really lucky that I haven't reused these Oyumaru molds between the previous night and this one. I even found some other molds I've made back in the day, like this Imperial lunchbox. UV cure resin should be the perfect thing for a 24 hour challenge as it cures in five to 10 minutes instead of 24 hours. I bent wire into the shield to help me attach them to the knight and then I squirted resin into the molds. This stuff is pretty thick. I used a toothpick to push the resin all over the mold and then I blasted it with the UV flashlight. It's been cooking for like 10 minutes. Hopefully it's perfect. It's, it's pretty hard to see cause it's crystal clear but it looks like that worked perfectly. Now I can assembly line these suckers, filling up the resin and pressing the support wire into place. I'm really excited though at how well this worked because usually casting and molding is like a multi-day affair, but this is pretty easy. The next step of a big stompy robot is the reason you get a big stompy robot and that is the weapons. Oh, and what a weapon it is. The lance is strength 20. Weapons like the Lance are part of what makes 40k so fun. This is essentially a tank that medieval charges enemy tanks to skewer them. Is it practical? Probably not. Is it awesome? Hell yeah. This Lance weapon is actually quite a bit taller than a normal Imperial Knight. And speaking of weapons, this kit is actually part of three different Knights with three different weapon loadouts. 
and don't tell Games Workshop, but uh, I might just 3D print all of the other weapon options. And to attach them, I'm gonna be using magnets. And that brings us to today's sponsor, the Magnet Baron. The Magnet Baron is the number one stop for all things magnets. Whether you want to make your models easier to transport, extra poseable, or save some money getting the most out of your models with weapon options, the Magnet Baron has you covered. They have all the magnet sizes wargamers need, whether they're looking for tiny infantry weapon magnets or big honk and vehicle magnets. They have it all, and I find their magnets to hold with just a little more tenacity than other magnets I've tried. And what sets the Magnet Baron apart is that they also carry all the tools and supplies you need to get your magnetization projects finished. They carry high quality drill bits, perfectly sized to complement the magnets, and these drill bits are super sharp. I have bought a lot of small drill bit sets, and they are always either broken or dull. Magnet Baron bits blast through plastic and resin. And they have high quality pin vices and magnicators to make drilling and checking the polarity of your magnets a breeze. And when it comes to glue, they have it all. Insta-set, anti-clouding, quick drying, it really is a one-stop shop. The next time you're looking to pick up some magnets for your miniatures, or have a particularly tricky project coming up, give the Magnet Baron a try. I have the Magnet Baron's Imperial Knight Magnetization Kit, and this should give me everything I need. I just have to figure out where it goes. These arms are a little different from the normal knight arms. They have a captive peg system. It's pretty clever design, but not very modular. I glue the two halves together, and this joint is where my magnets are going to sit. 10mm disc magnets ought to do the trick. The 10mm drill bit did an admirable job, but this part is just too small to hold tightly in my fingertips, so I switched to a Dremel tool. The magnet sunk right in, and the job is 50% done. I cleaned up the other side and traced the magnet with a pencil so I could see how big to make the hole. And boom. Easy breezy beautiful, magnet connection weapon hard points. On his head, I noticed a potential design flaw. The mouth guard on his robot face hooks up and covers his eyes. Even in the box art, you can see he is completely blind. I flipped these 180 degrees and glued them on upside down and it looks way better to me this way. This kit is incredibly poseable. He's kind of a limp noodle right now, but it's really impressive. It reminds me a lot of Gundam kits, which I actually have one. This one. Don't know when I'm gonna get around to building it, but it's kind of neat. One thing that is not posable on this guy is this part of his leg. It's actually a giant hydraulic piston, and I really want this guy lancing, and so I feel like his front foot would be really compressed, and so I wanna try to pull that off. Taking a saw to a perfectly good knight leg feels wrong, but the end result will be oh so right. I cut the leg and removed the previously glued peg, drilling out the small piston, and then cleaned it all up, and the new short leg fits right in. It's a pretty strong connection. Kind of a lot of work, but I got myself about a half inch, and that is going to make all the difference. Now, I think to get this guy properly posed, I need to know what his base is gonna look like. And to know what his base is gonna look like, I need to build the base. Inside of this box is every extra bit we have ever printed for one of our Eons of Battle Patreon terrain packs. By the way, Eons of Battle Patreon, we have a new STL train pack every single month. This month we have orc vehicles, including grot tanks, trucks, war rigs, and grot riggers. I return to this cornucopia of custom bits every now and again, and it always leads to interesting results. Ooh, opening this box is really dangerous, because now... Now I kind of feel like this base needs to be a whole diorama. I've got time for it. Oh yeah, I totally got time for it. I definitely don't have room for it though. I need to spread out a little more. This piece of our trench battlefield set of terrain gives me the idea of doing a trench themed base. And I kind of want to see how it looks because this is going to be a little bit of a dry run for another project I'm working on. A project in a box. This box. It's, it's not Seagram's Escape. I kind of wish it was Seagram's Escape, but it's not. Hot glue stuck down the trench, and I used half-inch cork to build up the earth in front of the wall. Remember that half-inch I took off the front leg? Oh yeah, it's all coming together. I cleaned things up so that there was nothing hanging over the edge of the base. After all, that's the knight's job. I nipped off his pegs. These are here so you can quickly recreate the pose in the box art. But without those pegs, I can freeball it. In terms of that pose, what I want to do is I want him kind of crouching and leaning into... Well, actually, let me just show you. I want him in a proper spear pose. I want him stabbing forward with the most of the spear in the back, and then I want him guarding with the shield in the other hand, kind of hiding most of his body. I filled in his hips with plastic glue. It'll take a little longer to dry, but be super strong. Now that I know where his legs will stand permanently, I traced his titanic feet with a sharpie. And while I was finalizing the pose, I put more glue in his tummy and squished him into position. 
I filled in the larger gaps with hot glue, and now for some Tidy Cats cat litter. New litter is best, but I suppose used would work just as well. These absorbent beads self-level, I made some piles and poured ultra-thin super glue over top to lock them into place. I carved some battle damage into the trench walls, and speaking of those walls, I need to fix, or rather unfix, the clean cuts my Dremel tool made. I squished Milliput into the trenches, and then hacked and carved away to make it look like it was blown apart, with wire rebar sticking out. Now to accessorize. I took some Imperial bits and piled them up against the inside wall. These Imperial Guard were pretty well stocked before they got wiped out. This is a more realistic scene than I typically make, so I grabbed some Vallejo mud putty and smeared it all over the ground, sprinkling just a little sand on top and then locking it in place with some watery Elmer's glue. This is my favorite base that I have ever made. It's also probably one of the biggest, and it is very heavy, which is good. I do not want to knock this guy over. About 10 hours into the process, starting to feel it a little bit, but what I would love to do is in two hours be priming. I would love to split it 50-50, 12 hours of building, 12 hours of painting. I think that would be perfect. I gotta get him ready. These shields hang off the bottom of the shoulder pad, and it is thin. I managed to drill and pin the first piece, but after that, I figured I could just glue the wire to the inside of the pad. No one will be able to see up there anyway, and I know if I tried to drill every shield, I would poke holes right through his shoulder. With the clear shields on, it looks like it would make for some really cool stained glass. I might have to hang on to that idea for my Sisters of Battle army. Oh, it's all done, it's all built, and with all the armor off, it looks just like a plucked chicken. It's awesome. Man, is this a tall miniature. This is a miniature. It is the size of my head. Ah, now it's time to paint it. I primed this sucker black. It took a significant amount of primer to get him all ready. His skeleton is all metal and I want to cheat a little. I don't like blasting models with metallic paints. To me, it just makes them glittery messes. I want to make it mostly non-metallic metal. I zenithaled the knight with a mid-tone gray, and then a lighter zenny with a light gray, then a sponging of white to make the metal parts have more texture. To make this gray more interesting, I sprayed some watery brown and watery blue over it. In random patches, this will make it more interesting to look at and make it look like I tried a lot harder than I did. I want this metal skeleton to look like it's real, made from different types of metal. I base coated some parts of the brown and the pistons with a bright silver, and the knight was ready for a wash. I don't want to use up multiple bottles of Null Noil, and I don't think it would be dark enough anyway. I watered down some black paint and blasted this over the model, wiping it away with a damp paper towel. This leaves it behind in the nooks and crannies, but leaves the raised parts nice and clean. In terms of non-metallic metal, the non is done, and now it's time for the metallic. I dry brushed gold over the brass parts and silver over everything else. This only catches on the edges and gives me that shine I'm after, while the majority of what is actually seen is normal opaque paints. Overall, the finish looks like perfect aged metal. His nude body is all done. I definitely tried a little harder on his skeleton than I normally would have. Now that this is turning into a little bit more of a diorama, I want to make sure there's really good storytelling. And the Serastus Knights are supposed to be ancient knights, even by the standards of the knights. And so his skeleton is probably thousands and thousands of years old, where his armor plating probably gets refurbished and rebuilt every couple hundred years. And speaking of that exterior armor. I really like this sea blue color that's going on. I think it would look pretty snazzy on a knight. But right now, I don't want a sea blue color. I want a super dark, almost black navy. So I have to cover most of it up. I sprayed black Templar contrast paint over top of the blue, which did the trick of darkening it, but it did desaturate and leave a matte finish. So I went back over these panels one more time with blue ink. Then it was time for freehanding. I have big plans for this armor, but I have to figure out how to do it first. I painted half the armor with a yellow-gray, and at this halfway point, I freehanded some hot rod flames using a nice, sharp, big brush. I sprayed thin red ink over the top and bottom of the flame, letting this spill onto the blue. This gives the tip of the flame a subtle glow, and I brought the color saturation of the yellow up by glazing a bright yellow paint. I sponged on more of the yellow-gray to give texture to the heart of the fire, and then I darkened the bottom with some contrast black Templar, bringing the color saturation back with some red ink. Then I picked out all the trim with silver, and then a dunking of streaking grime. After I wiped this off, I darkened the metal a little, picking out the edges and rivets with an edge highlight of silver. 
I felt like I was really rocking and rolling at this point, so I tried to make some paint chips sponging and painting on gray, which didn't look right. So then I tried black, which didn't look right. So then white paint, which also didn't look right. So I ended up painting over all of this with silver and calling it done. This one little spot right here, his little leg is all done. And I'm sure many of you are wondering, what the heck night house is that? And the coolest among you already know, because it has to do with what's in this big old box. Inside this box is the fourth most expensive miniature you can buy from Games Workshop. It is the Reaver Titan. The Legio, the actual Titan Legion that I want to do is Suture Vora, the Hot Rod Flame Legion. And so that is what I want to do with my knights as well. Frankly, this model scares me, but Suture Vora, the Hot Rod Flames, that is what I want to do. And so this knight is going to be a little bit of a dry run, a incredibly small dry run in comparison, but this model is still huge and I don't have that much time left. So I'm gonna have to pick up the pace a little bit. The armor is on there and he is looking super royal and regal and awesome. And I only have an hour and a half left. Hour and a half to do the weapons and the base. And that is a big old base. I think it is possible. One thing I forgot I wanted was his big old fist to match the yellow of the fire. I could have done this all at the same time while I was freehanding, but it's getting really late again. And my mind is getting fuzzy. 24 hours of anything starts to get intense. My hands are shaking, my eyes are getting tired, but it's all coming together. The weapons are done and that leaves me with about 40 minutes to paint the base. And this is a base I could probably spend quite a few hours on, but see what I can do in 40 minutes. I have a lovely Zenithal on there now, which is perfect step one for some contrast paint. I glazed green over the walls and floor and I have absolutely no time, so I can't really paint anything. I can just about get everything a color. I use speed paint to get colors all over the details, like the las guns, jerry cans, and lunch boxes. And now that everything is colored, I airbrushed white over top, just a dusting to desaturate these. If I was base coating, shading, and highlighting everything, I would have full control over my color saturation, but because I am speed painting, I have to cheat this. I use the white to push the Zenithal further and blend the decorations together so nothing stands out as too bright. And then in the last few minutes, I literally threw panel liner and streak and grime over everything to give it a wash. This will also bring the colors closer together in vibrancy and make them feel like they all belong together in the diorama. Boom! Under 24 hours. <sighs> Oh, oh my God, I'm going to bed. Ugh. I had a good night's sleep. I had a big glass of matcha tea. I am all better now. <laughs> Painting for 24 hours is quite an undertaking. I don't recommend it. It gets a little wild towards the end and it's probably better to just enjoy and be just calm and comfortable the entire painting process, but it does lead to some pretty wild things. There are definitely a few little touch-ups I need to do. His eyes never got picked out, and obviously this shield should have the Sutra Vora symbol on it. This guy will pal around with my Templar, but he's got me really excited. I could see myself starting a knight army, even a titan army. We didn't buy this Reaver Titan. It's a long and messy story of how we ended up with it, and we'll let you in on it if this video gets 10,000 likes.